State of Style Parade, Samir Balwani. Yes. Samir organized it with the mayor. He's like, well, we're having a conference. We should have a parade, too. Um, all right. So uh, we're about to uh, jump into something super cool. Um, a lot of you guys, obviously, are content creators. Um, you understand media uh, probably better than 99% of the population out there. Um, these guys have learned how to use content and storytelling uh, in the context of brand. Sean Carrasso, Fall and Whistles, everybody. It's great to see it. So good looking. <laughs> um, so the panelists are going to enter, and you guys can clap or tell them how great they are, tell them how amazing they look. This is actually a treat for me because Gretchen invited me to be on a panel, but at least I didn't stuck you on a panel with the man repeller. You know how combative that was? So that's what Gretchen did to me. I was much, he's much nicer panelist this time around. Um, so, uh, so Gretchen uh, is a friend and a colleague uh, who is heading up a very important department at Parsons, uh, really taking the initiative in terms of where content and social media meet. Uh, she's a gem. She's extremely intelligent. She knows this space as well as anybody out there. Um, and we're constantly conversing on this, so it's an honor to have her here. Um, Brentport uh, is heading up uh, an area, a, a company called Liquid Thread, a major ad agency that actually focuses almost entirely on how content plays into advertising. And his perspective on this uh, is going to be super interesting. We had a last minute addition. Uh, you can just take notes like I did into uh, the program. Uh, one Ms. Jackie Stafford has joined us. Um, Jackie uh, has contributed places like Shape, like Vogue, the Today Show. She is also the spokesperson for SlimFast. Um, she is a rock star. Megan Cross said she's joining. I said, oh my god, how did we get this last minute? Um, so it's been fun that we got all these people. Um, last but not least, I saved because we hung out all weekend last weekend. Um, my friend Eric Hatz um, may be the early favorite for you guys. Um, she's over at a little company you may have heard of called Beach Mint and Style Mint. Uh, and not only is the mastermind, the utility infielder, and do all everything, uh, but also handles a lot of the celebrity relationships uh, with people like Kate Bosworth and Rachel Bilson uh, and the Olsen twins. And really, in terms of where celebrity meets content and brand, uh, really has her finger on the pulse of the conscious. So uh, this is going to be super interesting. I encourage you guys. Uh, we're getting almost towards cocktail hour, um, so you can get a little rowdier. Just pretend the booze is in your system. Um, and I'm, I'm going to ask Gretchen to egg you guys on a little bit, so make it interesting. Thank you, Ari. Um, first of all, I'd like to say welcome and thank you really to Ari and Megan and Susan and Rachel, all the, all the people at Stylecaster. I can't believe how amazing this, um, this event has been. So thanks for having me um, and welcome everybody. Um, you know, this conversation I think is going to be really interesting because um, I think, you know, there's a lot of different opinions on how celebrities are viewed uh, in this day and age, especially using, you know, new media and social media. So I really think that there's three sides of the conversation. The first is the consumer side and kind of their level of sophistication um, and the demand and their interest in being attached or participating in the conversation. Uh, the second is the advertiser or the brand. And then the third is really the celebrity and kind of that branding value that they're looking for. So, um, you know, I think that as New Yorkers and fashion industry people, we're a little bit jaded and kind of feel like we're on the in crowd. But where does the mass, con the mass market or the mass consumer kind of fall? Um, and, you know, and their level of interest and in kind of who they follow and, and how that impacts their, their buying decisions. No, I mean, I think for the be for the consumer, they are incredibly engaged in any piece of content that they can get their hands on. And I think what we have done recently is with through the proliferation of devices, create we put the consume in the consumer. They have to do something with this device, and they're you know, I think we back in the day in television, we used to train people to go to the bathroom when the commercials came on. And now what we've done is trained people to engage in content constantly. So they're, they're constantly looking for something. They're trying to find um, as much information that they can. And so it, it is really how they kind of port across their day um, and where they re they'll engage with different people throughout the day. But you know, I think celebrities are driving a lot of that traffic. I mean, I, I can speak to it in, in, in terms of kind of flipping the question a little bit on its head, which is what we were talking about backstage for a second, which is, you know, 
you also first have to define what a celebrity is mm -hmm. in this world because you know with with a social graph um, you know on Facebook a celebrity in a certain niche in a certain um, you know sector of fashion or style is very different than um, just saying okay Shakira has X many million of um, Twitter followers so that must mean if she tweets about my brand I'm going to see conversion and I think that that goes back to a lot of the conversations we've been having today about um, about what really engagement is and whether you know how how meaningful is a clout score versus um, you know versus what's really going to take you know someone's actually going to take action from and so if, you know for us and in, in all of our Beachman brands you know we look at um, celebrity is very, very, you know, it's, imp it's important. There's a lot of credibility that comes from that. There's a lot of authenticity in the celebrities that we, we choose in their categories, but they're always married with a partner. Um, there's an expert and there's somebody who brings also, you know, a different voice and a different authenticity to the brand itself. So for Kate Bosworth, it's her stylist, Cher Coulter. For Jessica Simpson, it's an esthetician um, that, you know, she's worked for, for, with for many years. Mary Kate and Ashley happen to be the only brand where they, they kind of serve both purposes because they are very well-known designers as well as the sort of the celebrity piece. And so, you know, we, we've decided that we're going to marry the two because we don't actually believe that a celebrity will can just carries, you know, uh, can carry a brand. Well, they say that every community has its Oprah. And so um, I kind of want to ask, uh, you know, some of the, one of the panel members, maybe Jackie can answer this. Um, you know, I, I know that a lot of celebrities are on time delay for their tweets, and they're often edited by third parties, maybe not even living in the same city. Um, so how do you feel that lends into that authenticity or lack, lack thereof? Well, I think it's so important to your point about authenticity. I think one of the most uh, crucial points about a brand being associated with a, with a celebrity is to make sure that the celebrity really does carry a, across that authenticity stamp of approval with the mass. If we're talking about the mass, rather than re the real high-end fashion people can, can extrapolate by themselves how they feel about a celebrity. But I think when you're targeting the mass, it's so important to get somebody that you honestly feel uses and loves that product. I've seen so many times when, when brands will, or pe you know, people that I work with, some my clients will, will come to me and say, do you actually think that this celebrity uses it? Now, if they're asking that, the authenticity is completely shot. So I think the most important thing is finding it is, is with the mass, the not necessarily the people that are so into the fashion scene that really get how, uh, how they relate to a uh, celebrity. So it has to be very, very authentic. Do you think that the mass consumer knows that celebrities are paid for tweets now? I think they are becoming more aware for certain. I know there's the whole, or the whole thing going with Twitter, making sure that you have the, the hashtag and the spawn, you know, sponsored. So that needs to be more, obviously, I, I believe that most people know that. I would assume that most people know that. Um, I think a lot of people still believe, honestly, that a celebrity is endorsing a product if they tweet about it. Um, and whether they actually take that seriously, whether they believe that the, the celebrity truly does wear those shoes, I'm not so convinced. I would say that, that it's really all about making sure that you truly want to follow that celebrity and want to believe they're saying. I have most clients that say to me, I don't believe that they're wearing that and they're right. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Um, I guess I still, I still just struggle with understanding whether the consumer, um, you know, how it, how it affects the brand as well. And um, the fact that mass consumer knows that it's a promoted tweet. Um, you know, say you were to consult with a celebrity client or even for a brand, would you recommend that they, um, you know, that they participate in, in that kind of, um, you know, sponsored tweets? I, I mean, I, I think you also, you have to, I mean, it's very specific because there are certain um, tweeters and again, this goes back to what I was saying about what, what is a celebrity, but I mean, there's certain tweeters. I think there were a bunch of companies that started just, you know, a few years ago that are really almost now defunct, one of which was Adley, um, which started from the thesis that if you could just get celebrities, you know, you could pay Kim Kardashian $17,000 to see a lift in sales, it would convert. And I think what's happened is that there's a huge fatigue around that. Um, and I think now people are trying to figure out, like, well, who are the tweeters and who are, who are those social, who are those celebrities in those specific areas where it actually will convert? But I think ultimately it has to do with who the actual tweeter is because, and who that celebrity is, because some have a feed where they have a lot of content and they're very, very careful about the way they construct their content so that when they do actually do a sponsored tweet, it is more meaningful. But then there are celebrities who have decided that taking three to five grand every single day from different brands is meaningful. So every, you know, when, when their feed is, you know, littered with the sponsored tweets, it obviously has, has less meaning. Um, and I think that just goes back to, again, that authenticity of who's, who it's actually coming from. I think, I think 
authenticity is the key to this. Do you really believe that this person is in the game or not? And, and again, I agree with you. When it starts turning into almost like a sponsored tweet spam, it devalues the entire ecosystem for yeah. that celebrity. Totally. Well, I had this conversation with uh, students in class the other day, and they were saying that they would rather hear, you know, something good or bad on behalf of a celebrity or someone who they look up to than just, you know, something really boring and dull and kind of that, that dead-end conversation. So, um, you know, I think it, I think it is value, you know, valuable for, for celebrities and also brands to pick the, you know, the, that icon to represent them who is going to be authentic and who isn't going to just be generic. You know, and the other question is tonally, are they aligned with the brand? I mean, right. again, it is the sort of thing that you get into this world of celebrity and then all of a sudden something happens to them. Mm -hmm. Say <laughs> they marry they somebody go into for the 72 list. hours. <laughs> yeah. And th then you have brand backlash. Mm -hmm. And that can actually be something that you have to kind of dig yourself out of because you've tried to go for something that seems like the, the low-hanging fruit and you were going to, you know, get someone to endorse a product and then, you know, it kind of ends up biting you in the end. But I think in this day and age, too, with um, any, you know, anyone can be a celebrity. Everybody has this 15 minutes of fame or this extended 16 minutes, right, in the New York Magazine, that great article. Um, there was a, you know, anyone can make comments and have a group of followers uh, representing them or representing their brand. And so... Um, you know, what, as someone who would be, um, you know, monitoring what a brand is going to do, what, like, what would you recommend to the, to the brand? Do you, you know, how would you consult with a brand to partner with, with the different designers? Like, how did you come up, you know, select the designer partnerships and the celebrity partnerships for Beachmond? Well, like any startup, I'd like to say that it was all very well thought out and it was in these PowerPoint slides, but if uh, we look back to our original deck, um, that went to our seed round of investors, we were going to be doing a cashmere of the month club and it was with a very different kind of celebrity. But what we, what we ultimately decided was that, um, you know, first and foremost, I think at least with Kate, who was our first partner who came on and really took a chance with us. And that was when we had, you know, just had, we had, we had a seed round of funding and we had an idea and we knew we could build out a platform. She bought into, the, there was a technological aspect to what we do. We we're talking about personalization. Beachman is all about, you know, we have an algorithm that personalizes your selections every month for you. So there was a technological piece to it, and she, w you know, s you, we, we need someone who, you know, and our celebrity partners are people who need to be a little bit more entrepreneurial, thinking about what the marriage between fashion and technology is, and then at the same time for us, have authenticity around the category that they're interested in. It happened to be that she wanted to do jewelry. It was something that came out of a need in her life and in her, in her styling life with Cher Coulter, and she said, you know, what I'm always missing when I'm on shoots and what I'm always not finding is jewelry. And we said, okay, well, well then we'll start with jewelry. And that was just kind of very organic. And then with Mary Kate and uh, Ashley, it was also very organic. They started the, the mission statement. I don't know if any, most of you guys probably know. It, um, the mission statement of the row was to design the, the perfect T-shirt. And so they're like, okay, so how can we make that experience accessible to everybody? And so we started with the T-shirt with them. Um, and so it's I, I hate to keep going back to this word. It seems like the hashtag of this panel, but it's authenticity of to, to who each, each person is. And Jackie, we were having a conversation earlier about the 99%, mm. and um, how do you think that plays into, you know, what platforms is the 99% using? Are they following celebrities on Twitter, or do, are they reading, you know, more of the mainstream magazines to... Um, you know, to find their brands and follow their style icons. No, that's a good question. Well, I believe that I'm the 99% of fashion, unlike that everybody else is 1% because they're so fabulous. Um, so I, I really represent when I, all, my, all my clients are all real people. So I do, a, a, that's really it. So it's really the mass market that I work with. Um, and I feel they do look to celebrities. But to your really great point, I think the, the point about the celebrities being, again, authentic, when you said that they have a story behind it, that's so important. The great story that you have with Kate Bosworth and with Mary Kate and Ashley having a story attached to it rather than oh here's a celebrity and we just match them to this brand so having something a good story is so important and I think then that my clients are the type of people that will go oh I heard that she likes this brand because she couldn't find something herself so she created it that's a great story rather than oh 
I hear the celebrity is going to be endorsing this product, but really, what's the connection? I, I think it, it's so important to have that kind of story. So being the 99%, being the 99 I feel that, that people want to believe it's aspirational. They want to be involved with celebrities. They want to see what they're doing, but they must have that deep emotional connection. Well, I just um, saw an art, um, an, a Gillette ad with Adrian Brody, who's, um, you know, was in GQ, and it's all it, it read more like this branded content um, advertising than just that true, um, true flat ad. So I think that the line is being blurred between this branded content slash advertising. Um, do you think that there's new platforms for advertisers to, you know, to share that with the consumer? That's a question for you. Well, I mean, <laughs> look, I completely believe that the ecosystem has changed. Um, you know, back in the day, if you kind of did like two, um, two circles, you know, the uh, broadcaster was really in the middle, and then the consumers followed around that. But now it's kind of flipped on its head, and you've got the consumer th in the center, and what surrounds them in the first circle is really the device or the platform, and then you've got the content that goes around that. So there's a million different opportunities based on the actual platform itself. And I think what we all struggle with is how do we port content across multiple device streams so that it really fits within, you know, whether it's 140 characters, whether it's a mobile piece, whether it's, you know, digital or it's on television, you've really got to craft what this piece is based on where it's going to port to. It can be similar stories, but it has to be really, it has to live in that space. So, I mean, look, we, we do a lot. Look, uh, when I first started, it was in product placement. We moved to integrations. And what we're really looking at from, you know, even a very basic television standpoint is how we reinvent the commercial time so that it's more effective because it has to be contextually relevant to what it's running next to to really kind of bring that to life. So we're starting from the ground up with a lot of advertisers and saying, you know, you can have your brand spot and that's great, but what we want to do is surround this piece of content with branded uh, content as well because it'll help the actual brand spot with um, incremental lift. So it's really weaving the story through all the different platforms. Mm -hmm. Completely. I mean, story, ha you have to, again, we've all said it, you know, you've got to tell a good story. Doesn't matter what you're doing, but it's got to be a great story, the right platform, and then, you know, customizing it based on where it's going to go. And also understanding the consumer's journey at the core. How do they start their day? Where are they in the middle of their day? And how do they end it? Because you can kind of follow them. And who do you think is doing a good job right now? Well, I'd like to say our clients. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I actually have been working on the Microsoft business right now, and I think some of the stuff that Microsoft is doing, um, whether we've been we've done a lot of work with Bing, and Bing does a great job. Um, they take risk. They want to create stories from the ground up versus um, traditional advertising, and they want to also change the formats. It's, it's really interesting. All right, I'll bonus time. I'm about to jump in. I, I there's rumors in the audience that Eric Katz reeks of cool, um, and I concurred with all of that. Um, so all of you, uh, who has questions? Come on. I have green tea if you guys need Melissa Gilbert. Uh, Scream. The question is about actors, celebrities, or traditional celebrities to the transition to bloggers endorsing brands. I mean, I think it's a really exci uh, exciting time. I think it's really interesting to, to look at how, I mean, it, where I think it's 